Hey, my name's Jordan Valeriat. Happy to be here for my friend Graham at Recording Revolution today. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to record drums that sound big, tight, and punchy, even if you're working in a tiny room. Now let's face it, drums are one of the hardest instruments to record well, period. And not having access to kind of a big, nice sounding live room to record them in feels like a big stumbling block for a lot of engineers. But you should not let that hold you back. I mean, personally, I recorded in a lot of nice studios through the years, and it's always a little extra treat. It's a little bonus when you get to go into those really nice big live rooms and record drums there. But at the same time, I also made many records for notable bands and notable labels out of a tiny 300 square foot live room. And I was able to record drums that sound just as big and just as powerful and just as good in that small room uh, as they did in the big rooms. I mean, I really didn't have any other choice, right? Uh, for example, these drums right here were recorded in that little 300 square foot live room. So how do we get those kind of results out of a small room? Well, let's dive into the three tips that I have for you today. First tip is to deaden the room as much as possible. I want you to abandon all hope of getting a nice, open, live, uh, big room drum sound out of your small live room. So if your space is anything less than, let's say about 600 square feet, and it has not been professionally acoustically designed, then any room sound that you have in there is probably going to suck. It's not gonna sound good. It's gonna have a really kind of boxy, nasty sounding mid-range. There just isn't enough space for that nice live ambience to develop. So any room ambience that you are capturing uh, is not good ambience. It's just probably not gonna sound good. And to add to that, in a small room, your drums are gonna be close to walls. And so you're gonna have a lot of uh, bounce back and, and reflections coming back into your microphones, which is just gonna add a lot of mess to your signal. So you want your room to be pretty dead. So I'll show you how I did it in my project studio. So this is the live room at my old project studio. Uh, this is a fisheye lens, so it makes it actually look a little bit bigger than it really is. But you'll notice how I have treatment all around, and I wanna start with the floors. So I've got rugs there. I just got some cheap rugs or ones that friends or family were getting rid of. Put those down on the floor because to stop those reflections, right? And then I've got these two foot by four foot panels hung all around the room, kind of evenly spaced, plus these two ceiling clouds up there. Now these panels are a rigid fiberglass. Um, this was Owens Corning 703. You can find similar panels from uh, different manufacturers. And if you wanna go the DIY route and cut costs, they're not that expensive to make, maybe 10 bucks per panel for the raw material. Then you head to uh, your local bulk fabric store, grab some fabric, cover it up, hang it on your walls. Or if you're willing to spend a little extra, you can buy pre-made panels online, or if you're handy or you know someone who's handy, you can build little uh, solid frames around them and do it that way as well. So there, there's a lot of options. And you really wanna go for these types of panels, again, two to four inches thick. Most of these are two inch thick, and then in the corners and on a couple walls, I have four inches thick. And the thicker it is, and the more space it, it takes up, um, the more uh, broad range of frequencies it's gonna absorb. So you don't wanna rely on just the you know, the foam that a lot of people sell that you can buy in music stores, the foam that you stick on the walls, it's really only gonna address the high frequencies. So don't rely on that. You really need more broadband absorption like these panels. Um, the only place I would rely maybe on the foam is just on the ceiling. If you can't hang a cloud and you're wanting to maybe save some money there, put some of that foam up on the ceiling, you know, above where your symbols are gonna be to help cut down on some of those high frequency reflections. So you don't wanna leave too much bare space in between the walls. So I'd recommend between 12 and 18 inches between these panels. And in the corner, something really key is you're, you'll notice that I've straddled the corner here. So it's on a diagonal. Um, that leaves an air gap behind it. So you wanna do that in the corners and uh, use a four inch thick panel if you can. You can see in this, uh, in this photo here, uh, originally I just had one panel in the corner there and then I got another one and I stacked them up. So they're actually floor to ceiling base traps in the corner. So make sure you're straddling those corners to really get the best results and tighten up that low end. And you wanna be strategic when you're placing the treatment around your room. So you see that red carpet there, that's where I would record drums. So I made sure I had a ceiling cloud above that, made sure I had the floor to ceiling base trap in that corner specifically. In the other corner, it's not floor to ceiling. There's just one panel. And I just wanted to make sure that I, I had as much absorption around that area where the drums were as possible. So be strategic, especially, you know, if you're starting out, you're just gonna do a little bit at first. Think about where you put the drums in the room and make sure you have treatment around that area. Focus there first. And don't be overwhelmed or thinking you need to go from zero to 100 when it comes to treatment. Um, I added just bit by bit in this room, just a little bit at a time. And each step of the way, 
things started sounding more clear, tighter, punchier. And so I would add a little bit more until I got to this configuration and I was happy with the sound. Just grab a few panels, put them up, see how it sounds. And just over time, add more and more until you have a really nice, clear, controlled, tight sound. All right, my second tip for recording drums in a small room is that your overhead mics are cymbal mics. They are not drum kit mics. Do not be trying to capture a nice overall stereo image of the full drum kit in those overhead mics. Those are for your cymbals. So for that purpose, I like to use small diaphragm condensers because they're bright, they're very directional and focused on where you're pointing them. And I like to use a spaced pair like this. So on one side, you're gonna capture, let's say one crash and the hi-hat. And on the other side, depending on how many cymbals a drummer has, you might be capturing two or three. So in this case, we're capturing a ride and a crash. Now there are two really important keys to doing this properly. Number one, you wanna make sure that you measure so that each overhead mic is equal distance from the snare drum. And then secondly, you wanna point these mics at the outside edges of the cymbals. So you'll notice these are on the outside of the kit, okay? They're not hanging over pointing at the drum shells. They're pointing at the outside edges of the cymbals. Here's another example for you. Um, so again, we're trying to isolate the cymbals as much as possible. So that's why they're on the outside edge. So the cymbal itself kind of acts as a little bit of a shield from the drum bleed. Of course, you're gonna get tons of kit bleed. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. But you wanna mic them fairly close. You can't go, you can't get right up to them, right? Cause there's, you're gonna get a, a harsh kind of air whooshy sound if you mic them too close. Uh, but maybe 18 to 24 inches up, pointing at the outside edge. And that also gives you a nicer sound. If you're miking the cymbals kind of right in the middle of the cymbals, you kind of get that honky, uh, that honkier mid-range to the cymbal sound. This gives more of a, a nice shiny, um, a nice sheen to the sound when you mic the edge of the cymbals. A couple more angles for you. You can see the spaced pair outside of the kit, pointing away from the drum set at the outer edges of the cymbals. There's another one there. You can see I'm trying to capture it right in between the middle of these two cymbals. Now let me show you the result of this in the mix. There's the raw cymbal sound. So there's still a lot of kit in there. Obviously drums are loud. You're not gonna avoid that. But watch what happens when we just take a high pass filter and get really aggressive with it, cut out a lot of the low end. Listen to this. All of a sudden, it sounds like we've got perfectly isolated cymbals. That's what we're going for. Clean, clear, isolated cymbal sound gives you full control uh, over the cymbals in your mix. And the point is, just like I mentioned about your room mics in a small room like that, if you're trying to capture a, a nice, full, big picture drum sound from your overhead mics in a tiny room, it's just, it's not gonna sound that good. So don't don't try to do that. Don't try to do something that you can only accomplish in a really big, nice professional space. Work with what you've got and be strategic about it. And plus, when it comes to that big modern pop or rock drum sound, that sound is not coming from overhead mics anyways. So I love to just focus on capturing a nice isolated cymbal sound with my overheads. So tip number one, deadening your room. Number two, thinking of your overhead mics as cymbal mics. These two tips alone solve a lot of problems, but they also kind of create a new one, which is how do you get that full kit sound to really glue it all together? So that brings us to my third tip for recording drums in a small room, which is the wildcard room mic. And the wildcard room mic is where you add back in that vibe, that character, that's really gonna give the full kit sound and really glue all the individual close mics together. So let me show you what I mean. This is a diagram of that old live room that I had at my project studio. Again, very small. Now up to the left there was the entrance. That was a little mudroom. That was an entrance way where people would put their shoes and their coats and hang them up and then come into the live room. This is where I would put the drums when I would record them. So it was pretty close to that entrance way. And now I tried for years to get a nice big room sound. Um, tried without carpets, with carpets, tried putting the mics in all different places inside the room. And they always sounded like trash. They were never usable in the mix. They always made my drums sound worse actually. So I did something kind of funny, kind of strange. I started putting a stereo pair of mics in that entrance mudroom, and then I would close the door. So those mics would be behind a closed door, again, only a few feet from where the drums actually were, but with that door closed and the mics in there, it actually sounded huge. It sounded like the drums were 20 feet away in a really big room. Let me show you what it sounded like. Pretty crazy, right? Uh, let me bring in the whole drum mix and then I'll just gradually fade up that hallway mic.
Pretty crazy, right? So if we clean up some of the low end there, add some compression. See, without that hallway mic, the kit sounds good. It's nice and clear and clean and punchy, but it just doesn't have that vibe and glue and character, right? It sounds a little kind of sterile, but when you add in that hallway mic, Boom, now we've got a really big, nice, live sounding drum kit. So for your space, you have to get creative, right? Maybe it's not a, a mudroom for you. Maybe it's a bathroom down the hall. Maybe it's, uh, it's in an attic. Maybe it's behind a closed door in a closet nearby. Anything, anything that's gonna give you something unique, something with some character, and something that's gonna make it sound like a mic is a lot further away than it actually is. So experiment, uh, and no matter where you are, I'm sure that you're gonna be able to find something that has that little bit of magic for your drum sounds. All right, so remember, deaden your small room, use your overhead mics as cymbal mics, not as full drum kit mics, and always use a wildcard room mic. I promise you, following these tips, you're gonna get much, much closer to that tight, big, punchy, label quality drum sound that you're after for rock and pop music and really all sorts of genres. I've got one more special thing for you guys. I created a new video series recently called The Full Stack Producer, and I'm making it available for Recording Revolution subscribers to stream for free for the rest of this month. The Full Stack Producer series will show you how to go from basement quality demos to competitive label quality mixes, and you can binge watch all seven episodes right now, Netflix style, if you just click the link in the description below and sign up to get started. So if you wanna finally figure out the secrets to recording, editing, and mixing at a professional level today and find out what it takes, then click the link and we'll see you over at the Full Stack Producer. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.